All right, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys why you guys should get the A7R2 for 2020. So let's get in this video. So I've been using this for around a year now. I've been using it for the whole of 2019, um, but I've been cycling through a lot of A7 cameras, which you guys can check in my YouTube channel down below. But, but there are three main reasons why I went for this camera. Number one, the price. You can buy this used for extremely cheap nowadays. I bought this for $1,300 Canadian. It actually retails for 2.2 Canadian dollars which is almost a thousand dollars of savings. And the other reason why I got this is because of the DxO Mark score. This actually beats the A7 Mark III by two points. This has a score of 98 and the A7 III has a score of 96, which is crazy because this is a very old camera. But moving to my reason number three, the reason why I'm using this is because of its video capabilities. But the more I started using it, the more I realized that the video capabilities aren't that great, which I will include some video samples in the end of this video. They're completely workable to clients. They'll love it. But as a videographer, I know there is better. But I'll further talk about this later in the end of the video. But let's talk about who this camera is for. If you're mainly a photographer and you do videos a little bit on the side just for fun, but you're mainly getting paid for photography, go with this. I think this is the best bang for your buck against the A7R3, A7R4, and the A7III. This is honestly the, the best camera body you can get out there. And the dynamic range on this camera is amazing. You can't be a camera like this for this price point. And it's honestly, I've been using it a lot for photography. 42 megapixels is a lot. And there's a lot of times I don't even use the 42 megapixels. But what I really like about it is the dynamic range and the ability to pull back shadows. You, you can work a lot with your photos with this camera. And this is where it kind of goes downhill in the video cap in the video category if you are a video driven person and your main job is to create videos i wouldn't recommend this i would rather go with an APS-C lens like a 64 a63 and if you have money go for the a7 III. um i can tell that at 1080p it doesn't look as sharp and you can watch my my last video it was filmed with this and my samyang 35 millimeter f1.4 at 1080p it lacks in that category, in the video category. It's very sharp at 4K, but it crops 1.5 more in 4K, which is a lot for a regular video camera. So I won't really recommend it. It's completely usable for clients for video work. I've, I've used it for videos in the past, but where it really shines is in photos. And I would honestly recommend this only if you're trying to do photos and video isn't your main, main thing. And another thing with this is that the rolling shutter is extremely bad. It's as bad as the A64 and A66 that I don't recommend shooting in 4K. Um, I would honestly recommend shooting at 1080p at 24fps and 60fps. This camera does have 120fps but you're gonna have to bring it down to 720. It just lacks and then in low light video and this is where the A7S II and the A7 III shines because they can process the lower megapixels a lot easier in video. And since this is an old processor, that's why it can't do video that well. So if, you're, if you really want 42 megapixels and if you really want good video capabilities, you're gonna have to upgrade to the A7R4 for that no crop 4K, but for the jump of price, I wouldn't recommend it. I would just say go with the A7 III if you really don't need that 42 megapixels. There's a lot of times where I didn't need the 42 megapixels. It was just nice to have, but I didn't need it. It was good with mounting APS-C lenses in here, but now I don't have any APS-C lens. I would say only get this camera in 2020 if you're gonna do photos primarily. It can work on videos. If in your, and if you're on a budget, you know, go with it. You can use it for videos, but for client work, I would honestly recommend if you're sticking with videos, go with the APS-C lineup or go with the A7 III. That's, that's pretty much it. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the A7R II for 2020. That's my thoughts. Um, I'll leave all links in the description if you guys want to see. And 
I would still say this camera is completely usable in 2020 and at this price point there's nothing beating it if you're sticking with photography but yeah guys that's pretty much it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time peace